Hi there. My name is Toby Owashika and I'm the host of Ravello. Ravello is an expression of eternal glorious fountain ministry presided over by Reverend Kaede Oyegoke. Now this episode, we are going to be answering your questions once again. Now, if it's the first time that you are watching, maybe you just want to check the episodes before, which you can find on our YouTube channel. After this Q&A session, we're going to go back to our normal broadcast for the month of April. So make sure you tune in. Welcome to Fountain Stream. Provide unlimited spiritual meal at your fingertips. Download and stream all EGFM messages at your convenience with our app. Over 50 gigabytes of life-changing sermons available to you anytime, anywhere. With affordable subscription plans. Simply sign up and create your own profile and create a playlist of your preference. Download the Fountain Stream app today on the App Store and Google Play. Welcome to Eternal Glorious Fountain Ministry. Our tools of engagement are teaching and preaching of the gospel of salvation with both apostolic and prophetic insights. At EGFM, we run a number of ministrations which include Writing the Vision, Revelation Hour, Prayer Meeting, School of the Spirit, Believers Convention, and Anamnesis. Connect with us today and learn about Christ and God. Join us online and stream all our ministrations. Thank you for tuning into this special edition of Rivello, where we answer your questions. Um, thank you for sending in your questions. Um, and also thank you for sending in your questions for the last episode also. We once again have Pastor Clay with us in the studio and also Pastor Lyde. Thank you, thank so you for, for joining us. Thank you for also um, last episode, all the questions that you answered. I was thoroughly blessed I and I know I'm going to be even more blessed today. Um, so we do have a few questions, but before we, um, you know, we start answering these questions, I want to open up with prayer. So um, Pastor Clay, um, may you do the honors. <coughs> thank you. All right. In Jesus name. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory for the privilege of your light uh, to grant us mercy, to find grace, to help, to journey into your everlasting life. Mm. Father, we take this not lightly. Uh, this is a great gift and so great a salvation indeed, Lord, which you are opening us into in these days. Father, Lord, we welcome your presence here. We ask that, Lord, we will come under the cloud of your counsel concerning mm. this very uh, program. We pray that, Lord, you will inspire us to speak according to your judgment, to take care of every matter in anyone's hearts in the way that they will learn your salvation. We thank you for all trans. Thank we you thank you, Jesus. Lord, for your divine intervention. Amen. We say, Lord, at the end, that this will be testimony to your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor right. Clay. Thank, thank you. you. OK, so um, we have a question here. Um, it's from Olua Feishekemi Sholola, 
Um, and this question came through the Beacon Help Desk platform. Um, it's quite a punchy question. Um, so I'll begin. Um, during one of the meetings, I think the person is <coughs> referring to the edition, the February edition, episode two. Hebrews 5, 7 was cited. Um, and he says, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. He said that the preacher said this, this death was not a physical death on the cross. Um, and then um, Olua Fei Shekemi goes on to say, growing up, I was taught that the reason Jesus on the cross cried, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Was that at that point he was separated from God because he was bearing the sins of the world. Okay. So the question is, so I want to know how true that is, one, and if that is part of the death he asked God to save him from. So it's, like I said, it's quite jam-packed. <laughs> um, it might even take the entire episode to unravel okay. an answer, which is fine. You know, we have time. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, would you like to start, um, Pastor? Pastor uh, I think it's just wise for us to go th there. Uh, okay, Hebrew, let's I mean, go to the Hebrews scripture. 5. Hebrews 5, <clears throat> 7. And I'm sure it'll be um, displayed on the screen as well. Okay. Um... um. <coughs> Let, let me just stretch it a little bit to verse 9 so we're understanding context no. yes, what he was saying. He said, who in the days of, of, of his flesh, speaking about Jesus, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears to him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he was, you see the, the punctuation there uh, is a semicolon. So though he was son, yet lend obedience by the things which he suffered, and being made perfect, became the author of eternal salvation to them that obey him. Then verse 10, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Amen. So, um, first, the uh, first side of the question, whereas we know that it is true that Jesus um, bore the sins of the whole world, Amen. Uh, and in that sense, in that sense, um, um, to end justification for all of mankind, he bore the sins of the whole world. Do you understand it? But like the other, um, that, like was said in the other episode, really, uh, that in, in his flesh, hmm. he didn't love the process but in his spirit he desired to fulfill it his prayers was in the spirit not in the flesh okay do you understand what i'm saying in it, this was the prayer of jesus he said that father if it be possible let this cup pass over me mm -hmm. but not as i will but as thou wilt he prayed that thrice then at the end of the day he said let us, uh, uh, it said, it is, it is done. Let your will be done. Uh, yes, uh, it is done. Now, that prayer was prayed in the spirit, not in the flesh. So, what will it was saying to be done was the intention of God in the spirit. He wasn't praying that his will in the flesh be done. Do you understand? So, he wasn't, though his flesh did not want to go through a death, I'm trying to identify which death he was scared of. Okay. He was, he was afraid of. Though in his flesh, he didn't want, he, he, he didn't love the process of, of uh, dying. Mm. Do you understand it? Mm. He wanted the cup to pass over him. Mm. Do you understand it? But much more than that, in his spirit, he wanted to fulfill the will of God. Now, in his, that's, that's, that's desire, that labor in the spirit to save him from death was a cry of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So it was talking about another death much more than the physical. Okay. Do you when, understand? When you say the spirit, you're talking about his spirit, his soul, or... 
in his Sorry, soul. In his soul, okay. When Sorry. Say, when I say in the spirit, mm. that is, he was aligning with God and his, his soul was aligning with God and the spirit. Right, okay. Do you understand yes, it? Yes, that's now, clear. So he was talking about a debt that was, that transcended the physical. Mm. If it was just about a debt. Now, the, that debt is, is tied in an ability of the soul to deny God. Okay. To deny God. Now, if you read back uh, 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 further to verse 9, he said, be made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation. This is the answer to prayer, to the prayer in verse 7. He said, mm. to save him from death. No, so that saving from death is salvation. Okay. Do you understand it? Mm. So eternal salvation is the, is the saving from eternal death. Okay. By coming to what Jesus dreaded here is eternal death. Eternal death. He, he saw the capacity of departure from God. Mm. And he dreaded that position, having to... I love the, what, what is said in Psalm 16. Yes. Psalm 16. Let's, let's just, let's for the sake it. of reference, let's just open mm -hmm. Psalm 16. He said, For thou will not, what? Verse 10, You will not leave my soul in, in air. Thou will not suffer thy only one to, to see, see corruption. corruption. Thou would show me the path of life, for in the presence there's fullness of joy, at the right hand are pleasures forevermore. forevermore. So, the, the, and we know that this is a messianic sound. Mm. So, the question is, uh, you will not suffer me to see corruption. Okay. You will not suffer me to see corruption. This prayer that Jesus, the answer to that prayer that God had mm. was that there was a ministration of strength, a capacity to obey God. To that now, by every disobedience, we die. Okay. And we don't know the degree to which we die when we disobey God. Mm. Like I was saying to someone earlier, that if I choose not to obey God in a particular decision, I don't know how weighty that decision is yes. in the spirit. Mm. Like, the Lord saying to Moses, go and speak to the rock. Then Moses went and smote the rock. Instead of speaking, and yeah. He said, because you did not sanctify me before the children of Israel, you will not come into the promised land. Now, it, no, you couldn't have t told that the weight of that decision mm. is promised land and the spirit. Mm. You couldn't have said. Mm. You couldn't have. You, you, you don't know the weight of that decision in the spirit. But Jesus being a very highly spiritual man, knew that there's a pedigree to which, at which I must not deny God pleasure. Otherwise, if I turn, I can become eternally bad. Okay. And that is a kind of fear that every soul must have. Right. Before, before, before you can access salvation, eternal salvation, that's why he said he became the author of eternal, eternal salvation, salvation to all that obey him. And you said that that was the answer to this that prayer. That was the answer to the <clears throat> prayer that yes. he prayed. So that was the answer for him not to die. Not to die. He had to enter into yeah, yeah, eternal, eternal salvation, salvation and become the author of it. Author of it. Okay. And when you're saying that... You know, he was, it was a prayer in the spirit. You're saying it was his soul it that was... was soul's desire. His soul's praying. not to taste death. Not, 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 when I mean, I'm, I'm careful about yes, it because yes, so, yes. There, are, there are many, uh, many sides to death in scriptures. Mm. So you must know what particular death scripture is talking about at every phase. Okay. And scripture... Most, uh, scriptures must show it, scripture mm. to scripture, must witness to buttress what kind of death is being spoken of. Yes, yeah. sir. Because mm. there are deaths that will die also that are good deaths. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> there are deaths also that, are, that will die that are good, like Paul witness, we die daily. Those are, those are deaths that are good, that are ordained unto life. Mm. Mm. So, yes, so, 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 so you, re you referred to Psalm 16, yes. um, 10, um, you know, David here is almost like, is prophesying, saying, yes. for thou will not leave my soul, soul in, in hell. hell. And you're referring this to 
um, Hebrews 5, yes. um, 7. So you're saying that it was this, <clears throat> in terms of the, the type of death, it's the soul, soul that he's praying that, you know, would not be left in hell. Um, and it will, the, um, it will suffer, suffer thy see, holy one to see corruption. Now, now, I, I, I also know, I'm, 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 I'm also aware, sorry, sorry, I'm speaking for a quite a long time, now, that some theologians have argued that it was when his uh, soul descended into the lower parts of the uh, earth to bring, um, to preach, like uh, to uh, souls that are, were in prison, uh, uh, in the in the days of Noah, like was referenced mm. in Peter and all of that, uh, yes and no. Uh, uh, Can you repeat of, that again? Sorry, the theologians. Theologians say that. saying that uh, thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, and you will not suffer my your only one to see corruption. Was referencing the times that Jesus descended into the oh, lower so part of earth to descended, pre yes, yes yes to preach to. Uh, souls in prison in the mm -hmm. days of Naomi, Peter uh, referenced that. Mm -hmm. Then, um, and so, so some, some said that's actually what the Messiah Psalm was referencing. Referring to, yes. But while it is that, it is much more because you come to corruption. It is not when the soul has departed that it comes into corruption. Mm. Corruption is here on the side of life. So you can come into corruption in the days of your flesh. Yes. You, cor corruption is not what happens to the body when it is dead. Corruption is a life that is lent on the side of eternity. Mm. Okay. Corruption is an obedience that the soul fulfills here. Here. Yes. Okay, so what the soul fulfills here while on earth is what he now takes... Yes. So he, he, he loathed that estate so much okay. that he didn't want his soul to cooperate with death at all. Okay. So this, so you're saying this um, corruption, if it were to happen, it would have happened before he physically died yes. in his soul. Yes. Okay. It's a disobedience to God, which is an obedience to another law that is fulfilling the obedience. He said, he, uh, um, uh, two weeks ago, when we, in, in our previous episode, we we're talking about Peter, where he said that to deliver us from the corruption that is in the world mm. through loss. So the corruption, the, the system of corruption, the, what, what reduces man to dust is actually an obedience here. Yeah. That's what a man takes to the, to the grave. To so the grave, so yes. what I'm just saying that to say that the deliverance from death that Jesus cried out again mm. is not just a physical falling of his body mm. or the decay in the grave. Mm. It was an obedience that he didn't want to fulfill, yeah, but he wanted to yield obedience unto God. And by that response, God empowered him and he came into it, what is called eternal salvation. salvation. He authored it and he is able to administer it to everyone that obeys him. Okay. Um, interestingly, you know, we talked about everlasting life. Sorry, sir. I don't know if you yeah. want to. Before I continue, no, no, please go. Because um, go go I know um, Pastor Lide started this this trail of thoughts. I. Okay. But you can, if if you have no, anything. It's okay. okay. It's okay. We're good. We talked about um, everlasting life um, in the last episode. Yes. Um, and we know that that comes before you know eter eternal salvation. Okay. Am I, is that yes, like, or yes. eternal life? Now, is this referring to eternal life? Or now, um, maybe I need to establish that first. Whilst I don't want us to take our uh, audience too far yes. for the sake of um, leaving things mm. untidy. Yes, because once we start, we'll, be able to, we'll not be able to put things together. Mm. Uh, suffice it for us to know that eternal life is a gift of God. Mm. It's a, eternal life is a gift of God, having completed the journey in everlasting. Mm. Okay. It, it is good for us to know that at the end of the day, oh Lord Jesus, help us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bible says, if you turn, if you just go back a little from that Hebrews chapter 5, mm. Hebrews chapter 5, to the previous chapter verses, verses, amen. Amen. Just double back a little bit. Uh, you'll see verse uh, 4, from verse 4. And no man taketh this honor on himself. 
Now, when he was talking about this honor, he was talking about the high priesthood in verse, verse 1. The same thing that said, being made, uh, 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 verse 9, he said, verse 9, he said, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all that obey him, called of God an high priest after the order of Melchizedek. That's what's in verse 10. Then, before that, in verse, verse 1 of chapter 5, he yes. said that, Every high priest is taking a moment ordaining things pertaining to God to offer both gifts and sacrifices where, uh, who can have compassion upon the ignorant and of them that are out of the way. For he himself is also compelled about with infirmity. He said, by reason also, he ought also for the people also for himself to offer for sins. Then in verse, verse 4, where I'm, where I'm going, he yes. said, no man taketh this honor upon himself, but he that is called oh, of God right. as was Aaron. Mm. Then he now said, so also Christ glorified not himself. To be called what? To be made an high, high priest. priest. But he that said unto him. So we said that he came, became the author of eternal salvation. Yes. And he was called of God an high priest. Mm -hmm. So that high priesthood is actually eternal salvation. But it was not, he did not take it upon himself. He waited, after fulfilling all of the obedience, he waited on he that would bestow it unto him. Mm. Then he said that he did not take the honor upon himself. Mm. So having fulfilled all of the things, so Jesus told us that when you have done all these things, say to yourself, we are but unprofitable servants mm. who have done the bidding of our master. Mm. That it is God's prerogative. You see, that attitude of meekness is more important to God than... Someone who feels qualified because I have finished the course, I am mm. entitled to it. Mm. That yes. attitude of meekness, submission, waiting on God, knowing that we are on profit, He needs to bless us with. So even after completing everlasting life, it is the Lord that bestows yes. that gift called eternal life, as we see in Christ Jesus. Mm. That He did not take that on our point. Himself. God had to declare, "This is my Son." I'm well pleased. Then he said, he, he called him what? An high priest. Mm. Sorry. I closed the, the, the passage. Um, yes. He says, so Christ glorified not himself to be made high priest, but he that said to him, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Mm. And in another place he said, thou art a priest forever after the order oh, of no, Melchizedek. Okay. Um, okay. So um, when, when you... So if we go back to Hebrews 5, 7, okay. and, and, you know, Jesus prayed this prayer, you know, to be saved from death. Mm -hmm. You're saying that, you know, the answer to that prayer was that he was able to finish the course of everlasting life. life. But even at the point where he finished the course of everlasting life, and we, we've heard in, you know, previous episodes that, you know, our... Um, inheritance is um, incorruptible, mm -hmm. undefiled, Indefiled. fadeth Fated not him. away. And, you know, here in Psalm 16, it talks about, you know, you will not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So you, he's coming to a place of kind of incorruptibility. Yes. So Thank you're you saying so at the much. end, he's, he's almost, he's finished the course. But even at that point, you're saying he cannot bestow it upon himself. Mm, 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 mm. He had to maybe pray for mercy to the Lord. It's a gift. That will declare it to him. Declare it to him. And that's God who would then bestow God. It's the that. gift of God. It's Eternal the gift life of, is, a gift is the gift of God. Of God. It's a prerogative of God. Alone. Amen. Okay. Um, yeah, I, th I, I mean... Very clear. Um, so it wasn't saved from physical death. It was what was happening in the soul that he was crying at. And you're um, crying um, about in prayers. And, you know, you're saying that he got to a place where he had ascended to such a height that if he had turned at that point, you know, he would have, he could have been a, a, a very terrible death that he fell into. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, um, Pastor Clay, I know, um, you know, Pastor Lyde has really opened up the scriptures here. Mm. Um, you know, we're you know, talking <clears throat> about very weighty, you know, topics. Um, I don't know if there's anything that you want to expound on or any scriptures that, you know, you may want to, um, you know, share. Um, around this um, particular topic? Um, um, 
Yes. Well, there are, there are a lot to, to add here, but okay, not sir. in the sense of answering the question. Yes, sir. Pastor Lide have done that well. Yes, sir. There will be no need for me to, because of time. Mm. But uh, just like he had said, if I had to add little on that very scripture, I will leave uh, verse 7 because he has done, he has labored well on and that. Verse 7, yes. But from verse 8, though uh, that is talking of um, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 yes, sir. and 9, though he were a son, Though he were a son, mm. though he were a son, he learned something more. And obedience brought him to this sonship. Mm. Then it didn't end there because in this sonship here, he still does not have access to uh, eternal life because there is still uh, learnings between this very son to the finishing point where he, he didn't just utter eternal life. He, the reason why he uttered it because he also ended it or was rewarded with it, mm. just like Pastor said. So here now you can break sonship here into two mm. and say, though he was son, like we in the, in the previous episode, we talked about Christ. Mm. Huh? Yes. So this son here, uh, I believe even just to buttress it, when the first time we had the announcement of God to Christ at the River Jordan, when the heaven opened and declared and said, this is my beloved son of whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. meaning, meaning he had done faith very well. Mm, yeah. And he had graduated to the son that can learn his father. Mm. everlasting life mm. and Bible says immediately he was led by the spirit to be tempted of the devil mm. and all that so um, uh, you know there are many things we call temptation mm. uh, temptation is actually a privilege mm. to learn uh, there is a privilege to learn to come into the first sonship which is a, a separated son mm. the learning in the wilderness as we call it where you will be taught on how to starve the manner of this world, which in other words, the, the meat or the food of mm. this world. Mm. God told them, uh, uh, Moses said to them, you are, you are brought through this process in the wilderness so that you will know and learn that man does not live by bread alone, mm. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm. Um, the bread there isn't just the physical bread. The bread there is knowledge. Mm. There's a knowledge that have raised a man before, and that knowledge is where man inferred his judgment, discernment on the ability to choose whatever it is. That knowledge has sensitized him to decide as good or bad. Mm. Yes. And God has said it is not, uh, it, that knowledge of life, it's not good for man, it's not adequate for man. Mm. So the process to learn another life, you can see that there is a opportunity, I call it privilege, that will expose you to the light or the meal or the food, they are all the same thing, yes. of God that will harness a culture that will not depend on the food or knowledge of this life. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, take you, please permit me to take you a little bit back further yes, because yes, yes. we are in the season of the beginning. <laughs> because the only way to know where you're going when you have missed the road is to start again. Uh, how back at the beginning. Hell. So uh, these days, God is uh, shedding more light on Genesis, especially Adam. Yes. All right. When uh, Eve was deceived by what Satan tried to present to him, mm -hmm. ah, sorry, uh, in just to cut it short, the Bible said she looked at the, at the tree mm -hmm. and found out that it was food that is good, that can make one wise. Nice. All right? Yes, sir. Um, so he discovered that food actually administers the way of life. Mm. Mm. I hear what I'm saying. When you hear food, even from the literal sense, is to supply energy for life. So, and life is also 
um, come, is, is also issued from wisdom. Mm. It's wisdom that bats life. Mm. So, so, so he saw that there is a life that this food can bring. Okay. And in that life uh, has a good in it, it has um, a judgment that, can, that has a promise to benefit man. Mm. But the problem is that is not how God designed man to have his benefits. Mm. Right. Yes. Are you know what I'm saying? Yes. So I just have to pick that thought so that I will, because something I want to address in yes, back. Yes. So coming back to the wilderness, mm -hmm. you discover that God was now trying to teach them to expunge the judgment of life mm. that the meals okay. that have cultured in Egypt yes. has exposed them. Mm. Yeah. But God wanted to say, what I'm, all I'm trying to do is yes, to, uh, to uh, ex uh, um, explore sanctification, mm. Christ. Yes, okay. So in, in the wilderness, which we call suffering, mm. there is a life that God wants them to learn. Mm. Mm. Thank you. To let them know that you can live even without these judgments mm. of life that you can be sustained by God. And that by God means wow. by every meal that comes from that God. Is, yes. This is Exam As a matter of fact, originally, there, it wasn't just something that man has to live by dual meal. Mm. It was a fall that provided a meal. But God being efficient in, and skillful in salvation, hey. didn't stop automatically the first meal. Mm. But God brought it Grand through journey. Journey. Yes. Mm. journey. So as they go, God was revealing them commandments and instructions where they can depend on and to heal them from being sustained mm. by what lies the enemy have told them yes. that Jesus. without they will die. Yes, mm. sir. You understand? So God is telling them, uh, you know, you remember it got to a time and uh, there was still a memory that they were still retaining mm. uh, about garlic, cucumber, and yes, all that. Pra praise God. Jesus. So God was actually is culturing them on how to uh, trust him mm. to live by certain principles of life that will immune them from corruption mm. that the other meal serves. Yeah. What the meal, though they don't see it, but what the meal serves is actually corruption. Mm. Mm. It looks good, like uh, if saw it, uh, it was good, but it's not good mm. of God. There is the yes. good of yeah. the evil one, mm. but it's not the good. The good of the evil one is doing it another way without faith. Mm. Mm. Outside of faith. Outside of faith. I don't know whether I'm making any oh. sense. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So right. in this case, I'm going somewhere because yes, where I'm going mm -hmm. is in this suffering. He learned ob uh, obedience, obedience by the things he suffered. He so the se first separation, which is Christ, he, Christ is a son. Mm. Christ is a son. So they brought them, that whole process of wilderness is to... Um, um, you know, get them to arrive in a place where they have received anointed life. Mm. The right. power to learn everlasting life. Okay, yes. Uh, that's also okay. another, way, that's another word, in a way to describe an uh, anointed life. Okay. Is the, the, the power there is life. Mm. Life mm. is power. Mm. So that the life that has been separated from the world. Yes, sir. So then they now qualify to learn another life. Mm -hmm. So and you discover that the process of consecration is actually uh, another technology of death. So like the Some process of uh, separation, separation is death. Okay. Uh, okay. Death is in two ways. Mm. When you are served a meal or an understanding that makes you go from God is death. Mm. Mm. And if by mercy, God now wants to redeem you, you will still have to pass through the passage of death to come back to him. Right. <laughs> you know, the, the death death's you, in departure. Of the, 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 the knowledge that you Coming back, you have to come through death again. Yeah, you mm. have to die mm. to so death. So each yes. other way you look at it, <laughs> the passage is death. Yeah. Mm. Okay. On both sides. On both sides. So, in, and the bed, that is also suffering from being sustained 
by what originally sustained you. Yes, mm. another or kind of knowledge. Another kind of knowledge. Yes, that you so, now need to die So there is, a, there is a knowledge that administers death mm. and promise Thank of you. life outside God. Mm. Mm. That is the negative death. Yes, sir. All right? And God, in his mercy and judgment, has made it, let me put this word, precept upon precept. Mm. So in Christ, there are precepts which are um, the wisdom of God in bringing commandments on how to bring you out from that death mm. into his life. Mm. So here now, by the time you do the first school in that curriculum of um, life, yes. you arrive to son. Mm. This first son is Christ. Christ. Then now, you will now be, be admitted to learning this next phase of sonship. Next phase of sonship, Which yes. is the curriculum of everlasting life. Mm. That you also have to learn mm. eh, by obedience, yes, by the things which you suffer. suffer. There is another suffering. Uh, this, what we call suffering is actually the stopping of deaths from progression. Mm. Are you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, but it, this Thank is you, Jesus. It's called learning because it is not something we know. Mm. It has to be revealed. revealed. And there is an atmosphere to which we can uh, we'll be equipped to learn this thing is mm. by suffering. suffering. Mm. Praise God. I don't know what I'm making any sense. Yes, sir. So uh, the reason why I'm coming here, okay. my target is to arrive at eternal salvation. Yes, sir. Okay. Because eternal salvation, salvation itself is life. Okay. Uh, just to be a little bit ahead of myself, eternal salvation is a sealed life mm. that wow. cannot turn again. Thank mm. you. That cannot change again. Yeah. Mm. But before then, in this jurisdiction of learning, is what we call learning how not to be incorruptible, how not to be corruptible. Yes. That is everlasting life. Mm. So there is a death, okay. which is a kind of suffering, that it's also a knowledge to, that will, unveil, will be unveiled to you. That's why it's called learning. You don't know it. If you know it, you will not learn it. Mm. So you're saying everlasting life is learning how to not be corruptible how not how, how to, not to come to a state of incorruptibility, incorruptibility. Yeah. and there is the food like i said about christ yes. there's also a food, food for it for it yes so like what just jesus jesus came said i have come that you may have life and have it even unto abundant yes. measure mm. so this is first life you have life christ yes there is no son without life you have to start with life. <laughs> you have to start with life. Mm -hmm. So from life unto life, mm -hmm. till we journey into what is fullness of life. Yes. That is what is life called abundant, abundant life. Yes. That is the finished work of everlasting life. Mm. So it is where in you this. Said you're sealed yes, upon. this this is yes. where also it is called the power of eternal life. I mean, I, I, eternal life, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I told you that life is power. Thank mm. you. So the life of everlasting eh, is the power of eternity. Mm. Mm. I don't know what you're saying. Is the power of... Did you get this? Okay, so you're saying everlasting life is the... Um, Power, power of eternal is, life. Is, is eternal life. <laughs> Pastor, Everlasting I don't want us to stray too far. <laughs> so <that's laughs> a, because I'm trying to feel the, the, the pulse. The okay. question that brought all this yes. Yes, sir. is the prayer. Uh, is a prayer yes, that, that, is, that has to do mm. with God delivering, delivering Jesus, Jesus from, from death. death. Yes. All this journey from the beginning mm. when we receive when our spirit man is quickened mm. and we got the Holy Ghost, all the journey from what the, the way we calibrated it from the milk mm. is actually the journey to exit from death. Mm. Journey to exit from death. The journey to exit from mm. death. Because uh, but what brought us in that state before, earlier on was also uh, an administration of death that caused us to exit from God. Mm. So this is what is called redemption. Redemption, yes. Yes. Redemption doesn't end with Christ. Mm. Redemption ends with completing the journey of everlasting life. Mm. 
Right. Like my pastor said, there is where you wait mm. hey. to receive the reward of that Ever completion of, of that life. You know, just kind of said, my, my work is to do the will of my father mm. and to finish it. Yes, sir. So it wow. is in that <laughs> regard, in that light, that in Hebrew, we hear God declaring to him, today, that day, today, eh, I have begotten thee. Begotten thee. Okay. The, so I believe that so much has been said. Thank yeah, you so yes, much. Yes, I'm yes. so blessed, sir. Yes. Um, and I, I really do believe that we've answered that question sufficiently. Yes. Um, but also, I believe that, you know, we've opened, we've we've kind of gone beyond the question actually <laughs> well over um, well over <laughs> and because it's so um there's so much depth that's been said both by you pastor and Lyde, pastor clay mm. um i think what we will do um in the second half is if there's anything that you know may not be clear we can then just kind of make it a bit more or provide a bit more clarity around those things. Okay. But I've been so, you know, this is very, very weighty topics that, you know, we are, uh, uh, that uh, you're handling and I'm listening <laughs> to, yes. you're the ones handling it. We are hearing. In the second phase, I would like to speak on that verse 9. Uh, um, verse uh, 9, so, and being love. made perfect. Oh, so, uh, oh, this is where you wanted to, yeah, to, to land. land. Yes, okay, yes. sorry, so we didn't land there, so no we will pick that up. So, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation mm -hmm. unto all them that obey, obey him. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, so I've been blessed. Um, I don't think we have um, enough time to continue mm. um, because we're going to go on a short break mm. right now. Um, so please do stay tuned and we will be back shortly. Hello everyone. This is a special Revelo update. As you are aware, Revelo is an expression of the eternal glorious fountain ministry, popularly known as EGFM. Now, Revelo is a platform where the present emphasis of the world is broken down for easier understanding. You know, we have ministers come who break down seemingly hard and chunky parts of the doctrines into easily digestible bits. Over the past few months, we've had some seemingly irregularities with our broadcast times, and for these, we sincerely apologize. The reason for these irregularities is because we do not want a situation where you have to choose between Revelo and another ministration of the ministry. So we had to prayerfully wait on the Lord. You know, scripture says that as many as are led by the Spirit of the Lord, they are the sons of God. So we had to wait on the leading of the Spirit. And now we have news for you. Revelo will air on the second and fourth Mondays in March by 8 p.m. Now, let me say that again. Revelo will air on the second and fourth Mondays in March by 8 p.m. Now, the reason why we we went or we opted for Mondays is so that you will have enough time to, you know, cool down and have entrance for the word. Thank you. Bye-bye. Believers Convention 2022 Coming soon Welcome to Eternal Glorious Fountain Ministry Our tools of engagement are Teaching and preaching of the gospel of salvation With both apostolic and prophetic insights At EGFM we run a number of ministrations Which include Writing the Vision Revelation Hour, Prayer Meeting, School of the Spirit, Believers Convention, and Anamnesis. Connect with us today and learn about Christ and God. Join us online and stream all our ministrations. Welcome to Fountain Stream. Provide unlimited spiritual meal at your fingertips. Download and stream all EGFM messages at your convenience with our app. Over 50 gigabytes of life-changing sermons available to you anytime, anywhere. With affordable subscription plans. Simply sign up and create your own profile. 
and create a playlist of your preference. Download the Fountain Stream app today on the App Store and Google Play. My name is Toby Awashika and I'm the host of Ravello. Ravello is an expression of Eternal Glorious Fountain Ministry, otherwise known as EGFM, which is presided over by Reverend Kaede Oyegoke. We take topics that are being emphasized by the ministry per time and we break them down in a simplified way such that anybody can understand. Now we have a whole host of guests that join us on the show. They are vast and knowledgeable in the word of righteousness and can shed light on the current emphasis. So make sure you join us on social media. All of our videos are available on YouTube. See you on the show. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Um, so, Pastor Clay, um, you are talking about the journey of um, Jesus, um, you know, not just you know, to Christ, but all the way to being the author of eternal salvation through, you know, obedience by the things that he suffered. Mm -hmm. And I think you had a few more, you know, thoughts that you wanted to, to share, um, you know, on that matter. Yeah. Um you know, we, from we are we're trying to elaborate yeah. and see the life everlasting Thank you. from the point of view of death, the okay. word death. Mm, mm. Uh, to death also is a process. process. And and just to um, yes. just to confirm, we have yes. answered the, the yeah, question answered that the question, we, yes. we 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 talked about before. Yes. Pastor Lide um, did that. Pastor Lide did a, a really good job, yes. and I think you've touched on a few things as yes. well. But yes. you just want to expand yes. um, around the, the, you know, whole, the process, the, and the whole journey, journey of yes. everlasting life mm. is also a journey. If you are going to everlasting life, mm. it's a journey of one death to the other. Okay. If let me put it this way, in a little humor, if you want to return back or go away from everlasting life, it's also from one journey of death back. So there is a death of there is the pastor, pastor Lide said that there is a good death, the death of God, and there is the death of the evil one. Okay. So, but what we are in, what we're concerned here, even from the build up of this discussion, which is in verse seven. Mm. Uh, the death that Jesus feared is the death to depart from God. Mm. Uh, the death that even though as a son, it's still possible, a son, which is Christ, is mm. still possible to still turn back. Mm. And he's fearing and depending and relying on the mercy wow. of God Jesus. to uh, help him mm. based on the flesh, a man in the flesh, uh, the tendency of not submitting to this total death, which is the finished work. Like I said, mm. my, will, my work is to do the will of my Father yes. and to finish, finish it. it. Mm -hmm. Jesus began, did the will till he got to Gethsemane. Mm. And in Gethsemane, he began to pray because of sight of un understanding of what is 
the father is expecting from him. Mm. So if you can, you can relate with this scripture okay. about that event, yes, the prayer he prayed, the Bible said the, the thickness of the sweat was like blood. Mm. It, 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 there was a, there, though, like he said, there's a willingness in the spirit, but there is also a, a challenge in the flesh mm. to having to lay down his life Mm. to make sure that it is completed. Mm. The work of obedience, of ob uh, doing the will of God, is done when we are alive, like what Pastor Elida yes. is saying. It's not something, because the Bible said it is appointed to one, uh, for one to die once and after that judgment. There is mm. no privilege of any working of any will. Mm, and doing obedience. So you can see that Jesus Christ attained the completion of everlasting life while he was alive. Yes. What came after that when he rose was a reward of the everlasting work that he did in, in his flesh. In his flesh, in the days of his flesh. Mm. Did we get that? Yes, sir. So uh, what I'm trying to bring out here is that process of death, mm. which in this place, in verse 7, he feared. And like he said, we need to fear. It's not something we, we go into by presumption or by some level of arrogance in the spirit. It's something that we, one thing I love about that prayer in Gethsemane, mm. Jesus Christ was sincere. They didn't uh, hide that event from us. Yeah. He showed the sincerity of the his war, vulnerability. the vulnerability, the war, and he had to call upon his father to help him. The Bible said the answer to that prayer was that after he submitted and said, God, never, not my win, but yours be done. Mm. The Bible said he was strengthened and mm. immediately he stood and let okay. us go. You understand yes, what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, and this is also something we should uh, desire in these days of everlasting life. Mm. That we will know that it is not by our strength, mm. not by our might, but by his spirit. Yes. There is always um, aid, there is always ministering spirits, which is, who also is sent to minister to us mm. in this journey. So, um, like I was, just to conclude my thoughts yes. earlier on so that we can, you know, somebody else can talk. Mm. Um, so if you look at this process, how Jesus Christ authored this eternal salvation, mm. he, 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 he showed it hmm. that even though he right. got to Christ, there was still um, 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 an advanced course to learn about the life of his father. Yes. which is everlasting life. Mm. So he finished it mm. by the reason of obedience. And it was everlasting life is not a process where you begin to claim things as a son. It, there's also a program that will, this time around, the other one was a program to separate you um, from the judgment of corruption to the judgment of um, sanctification. But here is the learning of the, 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 to become, to not be able mm. to be corrupted. Mm. I don't know, that's incorruptibility. Yeah, incorruptibility. What makes men mm. corrupt? Mm. It is a work, it's a judgment, it's a learning, it is a process that God himself will provide, not just what you think yes. that is everlasting life. Mm. According to, how, co how customized the work of corruption in you is. Mm. They will bring it and to help you annihilate, not just to cut off the tree, because the Bible says, whatever tree that my father has not planted, mm. it didn't say we shall be cut, yes. but shall be uprooted. Mm. Mm. My father, this is everlasting life. Mm. What he has not planted, God wants to uproot it. Yes. Okay. And once it's uprooted, it can never find expression. expression okay. But when a tree is cut from the trunk, it can still find expression. Okay. So, but there is a learning in this process. Mm. So when it is finished now, I'm, wondering, I'm concluding now, yes, verse sir. 9. Mm -hmm. And being made perfect, being, being. So it's a process. Yes. Jesus Christ came into being made perfect. Yes, sir. And who is made perfect here is not a sinner mm. because mm. it's a son that has been sanctified. Yes. So we, that you say you do not have the work of flesh or not, that doesn't mean what am I learning everlasting life for again. Mm. No, no, no. It's because of the judgment of death that you still have. Mm. There is more to everlasting life than what you call sin. Mm. Mm. So and then he, if he being made, that means he 
finished so to the process. Yes, he yes. finished the work like he Correct. he said. My will is to my work is to do the will of my father. Mm. This is the finishing point where he was being made perfect. perfect. Then the next thing, he became the author oh, of eternal. So he now was the one that God. It was a work. A work that men would now see. Ah. Yes. How walk come, come of eternal come. salvation, yes. which to has God. to be with the first the submission to everlasting power mm. or life, then with the coronation of eternal life, which God will declare to you mm. as a reward, like like well done, yes. my son. Mm. Are you get what I'm saying? Yes, now he says, uh, came, became the author of eternal salvation unto all. Them that, that will obey, obey him. him. Mm. All them that will obey him. Mm. So if you will not, if you will not obey him, mm. you will fall short of this eternal salvation. Yes. So this eternal salvation is not given to you because you give your love to your life to Christ. Yes. Uh, in the hour, when we were God born again mm. and your human spirit was wow, the curriculum of salvation is so yes, be it's big so and beautiful. It's, it's, and this it is. is our hope. Mm. Yes. This is where we are coming. This is into. where we are coming. If we are not, if we have not arrived here, mm -hmm. we have not fulfilled the mm, uh, the purpose of God for oh, even starting the salvation in our spirits. Mm. Wonderful. Wow. Um, you know, the, the, this all came from a single question. Yes. And from that question, you know, we've, you know, we've really expounded it and we've kind of beyond, gone beyond the question. But I just want to ask some clarifying questions okay. just because the, 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 the question is just so, yeah, uh, so, 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 so um, right. vast. Um, so if we still, we're staying with, you know, Hebrews 5. Um, let's look at 8. Okay. And verse 8, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Yes. And you, you spent a lot of time yes. going through expounding mm. this. And you're saying that, you know, he, he was a son before, mm -hmm. but there was another level of sonship. Mm. And, you know, we, we know um, in scripture, Jesus actually asked his disciples, he said, who do you say I am? Yes. And, you know, Peter responded, he yes. said that you are the Christ. Yes. The, the son, son of, of the, the living God. God. But we also know that in scripture, Jesus is also referred to as the only begotten the son, son of God. Of God. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this here is talking about, you know, you know, you're talking about different levels of sonship. Mm. So, you know, perhaps we can, you know, talk about those different names. Okay. Um, just because, you know, you're talking about a process, mm -hmm. you know, and in that process, she talks about Christ, Christ mm -hmm. being in the, you know, the, the, the wilderness. Mm -hmm. um, and then you talked about, you know, him becoming a son. Mm -hmm. um, is this something that we can okay. uh, maybe um, uh, uh, try know, to explain? Talk about, yes. Uh, even though for the brevity of time, yes, it's, we cannot fully exhaust all of okay. what Christ became in the days of his flesh. Mm. But, uh, okay, um, mm. number one, let's start from the beginning. We'll go as far as we can go. Yes, sir. But we'll try to make it brief. Yes, sir. Now, in Acts 2, mm. 2.36, is it that 6 or 39? Bible says that Peter was uh, preaching to the uh, crowd at Pentecost and said that this same Jesus whom you crucified, God, has made both Lord and Christ. Mm -hmm. That is, Jesus was made two things. Mm -hmm. That is, was the emphasis mm -hmm. of Jesus' ministry. Mm -hmm. I mean, Peter's ministration at that moment. That he was made Lord and Christ. And every one of us begin at the point where Jesus, we accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. Mm -hmm. At that point, many of us do not even know Christ. Now, we journey with a conversation in the, in the world to a point where Christ's doctrine is beginning to be put to us. Mm -hmm. And the beginning of the giving of Christ is the enlightenment of our eyes because Christ is given to bring us from the dead. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm not able to go to many yeah, scriptures that's now that's because that's okay. it will further compound it would, it would take a lot of time. Okay. But they are all in the scriptures. You can get some of our messages and some of the other uh, meetings that we have shared. Mm -hmm. It would throw a lot of light on the scriptures. So 
Jesus was made both Lord and Christ, then we see in scriptures, like she said, that this Christ, when Jesus asked, who do men say the hide, son of man, mm-hmm. am, said, Peter retorted and said, you are the Christ, then, comma, the son of the living God. God yeah. Now, that son of the living God, he, he, that Christ is, is not just a person, he was beloved. Mm-hmm. He was a beloved son. Now, when we quote John chapter 3, verse 16, yes. and said, for God so loved the world, Yes. that he gave his only begotten son. Now, we use that uh, passage for evangelism, and it's not out of place. But really, who is the begotten son? Mm. That's it. Mm. The begotten son is not the birth of incarnation. The begotten son is not Jesus of Nazareth. Mm. The begotten son is not Christ. Mm. The begotten son is not the beloved son. The, the, the son of the living God. It's not the, the begotten son. The begotten son. The question is, when did scripture say he was begotten? Right. It's the same Hebrews. We saw, yes. read it earlier. Yes. Verse 5. Mm. He said that, so Christ glorified himself not to be made an high priest. Mm. Christ. He was already Christ. Mm-hmm. But he that said unto him, thou art my son. Today have I begotten. This declaration is at resurrection. Yes. Mm. So he became the begotten son, son at resurrection. resurrection. Mm. When God declared him, you are my son. That's, you see that in, in, in uh, chapter 1. Chapter 1. Mm. Um, yes, sir. Chapter 1. When he, verse 6, chapter 1 of mm-hmm. Hebrews, again, when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, he said, let, let all the angels of God worship him. Now, we can start from verse 4. It said, being made so much better than angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more, when did he uh, uh, obtain a more excellent uh, name? We see that in Philippians chapter 2. After he had fulfilled, he said, though he was in form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal be with, God, with God, but be, uh, humble the same, be, being found in fashion as a man, became obedient unto death, even the death of, of a cross. The Therefore, God had highly exalted him and given him a name. So yes. he obtained an inheritance. Mm-hmm. God gave him a name. So he said, yes. as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name that day. Mm-hmm. So for which, on, which of the angels said he at any time, that my son, today have I begotten thee. Mm-hmm. So when was he begotten? When he obtained the inheritance? That's at resurrection. Mm. So the begotten son that God gave, that whosoever believeth in him, is not Jesus of Nazareth. Mm. He's somebody that had finished not just Christ's curriculum, not just evaluation, that had become the son, uh, the fullness of God. He was all God. Oh God. Okay, so this he was is all serious. God. He was all God. That begotten son, that begotten son of God is actually God. That mm. well, he now read verse 8. Yes. He said, but unto the son he said, thy throne, throne oh O God. God. So this son, the son at this pedigree, this son at this pedigree was not the son that he declared at Jordan. So mm. we see scripture describe Jesus at different levels. Sonship so levels. an unlearned man who say, ah, son, 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 and mumble everything and together. The same but thing. those are not the same degree of sons. Yes. So there was a son that there was a son that arose at, at Jordan that God declared, This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. He had done things. Mm. He had fulfilled the curriculum of Christ. Mm. He, told, he had done things. He had he had come into a stature at that time, but he hadn't become begotten of God. Mm. But at the, by the time he finished all, and he had obtained inheritance, he had become better even than angels. Mm. They said all angels of God worship him. Now, that is the point where Hebrews was talking in Hebrews chapter 5. Yes, sir. That so Christ did not glorify himself mm. to be made an high priest. Mm. But he waited. Mm. Now, he had learned obedience like a, a pastor. So what we're trying to point out to the different curriculums in that that man Jesus embodied. We said okay. one, he was made both Lord mm. 
he became Christ. Mm. He did not only also stop at Christ. Christ. He housed the living God mm -hmm. and did that curriculum, uh, the son of the living God, yes. rather. He finished that curriculum and became begotten. Mm -hmm. When he said begotten, the begotten son of God is actually a man that had arrived at the full stature of, of God, God himself. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Um, and I remember the last episode. I think, Pastor Clay, you are the one that was saying that this is what man has been called to partake yeah. in. Um, you know, when we're talking about, you know, Adam and, you know, um, Jesus saying that, you know, Adam was, um, you know, he was made everlasting but on the like earth yes, the ever everlasting life, yes. um, and then the angels are also made for this presence yes. everlasting but in you know the, they, they were not supposed to change their estate yes. but man was called to he was able journey. to to journey yeah. and and not receive the everlastingness of you know this present of the heavenly yes. but of the Perfect. world to come which is everlasting yeah. um, life of God. God and yes. what um, Pastor Lide has just kind of described the journey mm. of Jesus. How that Jesus laid that, that he, template. He, he laid the template and this is what we're and called to God. learn. Yes. You know, all of these different to names and sonship yes. levels yes. up until we arrive at, at God. God. Yes, um, I remember saying that it's not about escaping <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, I, yes. I, 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 I think <laughs> I we need to build on that because <laughs> uh, one of the yeah. things that that um, that usually troubles us, the gospel of escaping air, yes. had really distorted the. No, I wouldn't say distorted. It it did. It was the light that was given at a particular time, mm. and we walked in it. Mm. But as greater light came, uh, 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 has come to light. Greater understanding has yes, come sir. to light. There's a need to walk in a greater light and a greater understanding. Else, that which we once walked in would now be found false. Mm. Would now be, when, when I say be, we will be found false, not that because it was not true, but it is important to, 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 to prevent a soul from dying. Okay. Uh, so that if you talk, talk about hell, Mm. There are people that, if, if it's going to be hell, then let's go there, let's ride there. Mm. The, 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 because, that, it's not because hell is not, a, does not exist, but it's not the full truth, so it's important to cure the soul of full darkness. Mm. Mm. So, you see, the end result of all this whole process is so that we become the people of God. Yes. Yes, uh, it's not everybody that is the people of God. Mm. Uh, the people of God, um, f conversation or fellowship has to be of people of like genetics, if you like. Okay. Uh, so there is something that God wants to work out. The purpose of God for man, like we said earlier on, there was no hellfire when God created man. Yes, sir. So, but there is something God had in mind. Mm. So let us make, I remember saying, the Trinity is mm. the us, not with the angel. Mm. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Mm. Yes, the angels may also have some level of image and likeness, but not the exact image. Who became the exact image, which is in the form of man, was Jesus, according to Hebrews chapter 1. Mm. He became the express image of his person. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, yes. please, uh, in case yes. I paraphrase it, let me, yes. Yes, that's why I will not get it wrong. Uh, and um, uh, something of his person. The, mm. the brightness of his, of his glory and the express image, image of, his of his person. person. So yes. it was the first man that had that image, not the angel. So that image is exactly what God wanted to bring forth from a man as a fruit. Mm. that can come into that likeness of God for fellowship. Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm. So if you look at Romans chapter 8, mm -hmm. verse 29, for whom he did for no, he also pray, he yes. did predestinate. Mm. To be, this is a King James English. Yes. It's simple put. He destined. Yes. Mm. Whom he foreknew, he destined. Mm. So there is a destination of man mm. by God's foreknowledge. 
Are you get what I'm saying? So he predestined to be conformed to the image, to the image of, of his, his son. son. Why? So that at the end, that he might be the first, the first born, born among, among many, many brethren. brethren. Uh, Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> sir, sir. <laughs> Amen. No. Amen. Uh, sorry. All right. Uh, the, the question I want to ask, people, people say Christ, not Christ, that the estate called Christ mm. is the image mm. of God. Mm. Mm. Do you understand it? Mm. Now, the, where, where I'm going to is this. When we're reading um, in Ephesians, for example, Ephesians chapter 4, the giving of the apostles, uh, uh, ministry gift for uh, perfect, uh, um, perfecting of the faith, faith for work of ministry, uh, Walk of ministry to welcome to the union of faith, mm. knowledge of Son of unto God, a unto a perfect man, unto the fullness so of the, the me measure, measure of, of the stature of Christ. Of Christ. Mm. Now, some people, by reason of the scriptures, I'm just trying mm. to mm, yeah, yeah. help touch, mm. uh, I felt that Christ is the end. Beautiful. But when he said that we, to, we, we come to a perfect mm. man, mm. unto the measure mm. of the fullness of of the stature of Christ. Mm. We so, are... The question uh, there, yes. you were saying... You yes, okay. that sometimes I said, is Christ the fullness, that estate Christ? Yeah. Mm. Is it the fullness of the expression of the image of God? Mm. Do you understand it? Mm. Now, now, when you look, look through scriptures, even though Jesus embodied the fullness of the Godhead. Yes. Do you understand it? It is not Christ as an estate in God, in Jesus, that is the perfect mirror of the fullness of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you understand it? That the person, the entity that warehoused the image fully because when they use christ to describe his being now you must know what that person that was christ mm -hmm. also came into okay do you understand it because christ had, had an image he said we are uh, uh, we, we were what a predestined to be conformed to the image of christ image mm -hmm. of the son I, image of, of the son thank you so very much mm. to the image of his son mm. now when you look at colossians let's see Let's see Colossians. Sorry, I just That's needed okay, to. I just needed to to do that. Wow! Thank you. Ah. Uh, thank you. Colossians chapter two. I need to. Verse nine. He said, "For in him." He said, "Beware, lest any man." Let, let me read from from verse um, verse eight. Mm -hmm. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy of vain, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the soul, and not after, after Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. For in Him dwells okay. the fullness of the Godhead bodily, okay. and we are complete in Him, which is the head of all principalities and power. In whom are, in whom ye are circumcised with circumcision, without putting off ends, putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ." Uh, and buried with him, okay, yes, which is the, uh, by the circumcision of Christ. Now, when he said, don't let anybody spoil you after with philosophies, but after Christ. Yes, sir. There is there's a passage I'm actually uh, uh, looking for. I, I can't get, okay. get the exact passage now. That Would Christ, you describe it? yes, okay. uh, who is the image of the invincible God. Okay. Who is the image of, I think, you see that? Yeah, the image of the yes, yes, okay, I'm, I'm yes. sure they'll be putting that yes. on the screen. Now, the, the, there, is, there, is, there is the expression of God. Mm -hmm. And Christ mirrors a great part of that. But mm -hmm. the entirety of Jesus' life spells the fullness of the Godhead. Mm. Do you understand it? Yes, sir. Now, the image that we are supposed to learn is the image that Christ has. Mm. You, don't, you, you get it? Okay. God has an image. Christ also has an image. image. Okay. Mm -hmm. Christ has, has a stature. Mm. 
a stature, a stature, a fullness. Now, the, 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 if I say you are, you are, um, you are, for example, um, Toby. Yes, sir. But the full, mature Toby is a woman. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The full, mature Toby is a woman. Mm -hmm. Or she's been Toby from the very inception. Yes, sir. But that Toby can be a girl. Mm. That Toby also can be a lady, a young mm. lady. Mm -hmm. That Toby can be a woman, mm. a full-blown woman. Yes, sir. Now, there is the fullness of who that entity became. That is what they are calling us to come and become. The fullness that the entity Christ became. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, that, it captures the whole essence of God. Now, what I'm saying is this. In looking at that image, Romans chapter 8, where yes. you read lastly. Let's just see it. Sorry. Can you read for us, Pastor Clay? I think you are there. Okay. Um, for whom he did foreknow, for he also did predestinate. predestinate. To be conformed to the image of oh. the Son, yes, that he might be the firstborn first. among oh many now, brethren. Now, this image of his Son that they are telling us to be conformed to is actually the image of the first begotten Son. Right. That is the first begotten. That is the old God that we are saying. Mm. That that is what they destined us. Mm. Not just the Christ, mm. not just the Son Christ, mm -hmm. but the first begotten son, the who being the brightness yes. of his glory and the express image of his person yes. and upholding all things by the word of his power now, that 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 entity mm. that entity is not just christ mm. is the begotten son. son of god okay and that's, that's the image that's that that's, that's the, the that's the person the whole that the image holds the image mm. of god okay. not just the cry. Now, the reason I'm seeing all of this is this, that we, even though we thank God for the trust of the church that has brought and labored to lay in some circles the foundation of Christ, mm. not just to mention the name of Christ, mm. yes, and we appreciate it. We were all held by it. Mm. We're all held by it because sometimes I'm feeling, the, sometimes Trying to bring a new truth seems to be that you are discrediting the work that other mm. ministers have done in the body. No, not at all. Yes. Not at all. Without that, we won't arrive at where we are. Yes. In fact, God wouldn't be building on it. The Bible says the foundation is Christ. Let every man be careful what is laying on it. Mm. That's what Paul said in Corinthians 3 and 4. Amen. Mm. That, that let every man be careful what he builds on it. So what we are saying is, is that the foundation is undisputed irrevocably Christ and what other ministers in the body of Christ globally have done to show us Christ both in believing and in laying the doctrine is good and sure and irrevocable but the Lord needs us to build on top so that the building can grow up into him which is the earth in all things yes. as scripture says mm. so we are not discrediting discrediting the work of anybody. Mm. It is good, it's necessary, it's a foundation. Yes. But we must move a little beyond that. Right, That's the trust. right. Um, and, and then this kind of building is the knowledge that is necessary for us to, you know, ascend in our soul. So, you know, understanding Christ and understanding the um, son of the living God, understanding the only begotten son. These are all kind of, you know, um, uh, precepts. Precepts upon precepts Precept, that, needs to, be upon, line that yes. needs to be built It's like upon layers precepts. of block of a building that have been raised, raised onto yes. God. Because, and, before, and, okay. and, and without the work of, you know, fathers before, yes. you know, you won't be able to lay those we found, well, to precepts upon we precepts. Be able to yes. do. Like Bible says that the church is the ground and pillar of truth. truth so yes. the ground is foundation. Mm. It's a, Paul said, I've laid the foundation, mm. which is Christ. Let every man be careful. So ground is foundation. Then the pillar is raising on to God. Mm. So the what there must be a an erection that goes mm. upward, God yes, word, so that the whole, whole body may grow up oh, into yes, the sir. head in all things. Yes, so it's necessary that these things be clearly seen. So Christ is the, the essence is Christ is not not the very embodiment of this thing. There is an upward walk. Work, yes. yes that must be and and I want to just point something out. So. Um, you know, we, we talked about Romans 8, 
um, 29, for okay. whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate <clears throat> to be conformed to the image of his son, mm -hmm. and that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And it's been said, but I just want to really, you know, um, point it out, that, you know, that son is the only begotten son. Yes. And the image that we're talking about is the image of God, mm. who being, so Hebrews yeah. 1, 3, who being the brightness, brightness of, of his, his glory and the express Christian, image of his person, person and upholding all things by the word of his power. So he's the image, um, you know, he came into the image of God that, you know, God said at the very beginning in um, Genesis, mm. let us, you know, make man in our own image. Um, that was a but, dream come true. Yes. So <laughs> Jesus, what I want to now kind of just land on is Jesus was the first. But him being the first, you know, scripture is saying in Romans 8, 29, um, the firstborn among many brethren. And that many brethren is, you know, what the church is being called to, you know, partake of. Exactly. So I, exactly. I just wanted to really, that, and that, I, know, I know you've safe, mentioned that's it. That's a safe point to land. Is, that's a, a safe, safe point, point to land. land. Okay, you know, wonderful. Okay. All right. So, do okay. you want to uh, um, yes. share um, something first? I, there is something I wanted to picture out. Yes, sir. In all this program that is in the begotten son, mm. the reason why mm. God made man it was what I was trying to establish. Because God wants to bring to himself a people yes, like him. Yes, you mentioned him. this, yes. And that was why I was building on that um, um, scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, to help us to see that it's not just all about escaping hellfire and all that. Mm -hmm. That is a purpose. Mm -hmm. God wants, if you maybe just put it that way, God wants a family that it's not the angels, mm. but it is the destiny of a man. Mm. Mm. And this is why we have to, if we, have, if we live this life only to escape hell and to make heaven, mm. permit me to use it, we have not comforted God. Mm. I hear them say, we have not comforted God. Mm. So our response should be that the purpose why God brought us, the project of man, if you like, is so that God will have a people where he can dwell in their midst. Mm. What God is having now as dwelling in the midst of the angel, according to scripture, is a temporal abode. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. Mm. It's a beautiful thing. It, it's a great honor and privilege, mm. such that David saw it and said, what is this man that thou art so mindful of him? Mm. Mm. And you know, you know, amplifying it, First John chapter, I think, 3, he said, what manner of love is this that the Father has bestowed upon us so that we can escape hell? No, it's the manner of love, the depth of the love is to bring forth begotten sons. Yes. Mm. That's the destiny. Mm. So if you read further in this very verse, we we'll just finished verse eight, 8 okay. to 29, 30 says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, mm -hmm. and whom he called, mm -hmm. them he justified. Yes. All right? And whom he justified. This is a process Thank of you. coming into that begotten son, yes, which is unto glory. Mm. Remember First John, First Corinthians chapter 2, I think verse 9 or 8 or so, mm. uh, that we, 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 we're talking about Jesus, uh, the wisdom of God which they did not know, the uh, they wouldn't have, the they wouldn't have crucified him, glory. which was done or then unto our glory. Mm. That's eternal life. Mm. And that's the glory here. Mm. That's the reward of yes. everlasting life. So you can see here, justification, you can see the son justified. I, I, I get what I'm saying. Yes, Are you seeing yes. the breakdown of this I'm life? Seeing it. Uh, and whom he justified, them also glorified. he glorified. Mm. So this is the project. Calling us unto glory. This on coming unto glory. Mm. And he, he, like it said the same thing in, I think in Hebrew chapter 2, we became, a, be, in becoming the captain of that salvation in bringing many sons, sons to, to glory. glory. Mm. So this is what we should labor for. Mm. Labor not for the meat that perishes, but wow. for the meat that endures unto everlasting, unto everlasting life. Mm. So it, we shouldn't settle for um, 
the, giving your life to Christ to, to be set from helmets on the flesh mm. and uh, from poverty and the lack of food or remains and all that. And so that when you leave that and you know you are making heaven, you have not fulfilled mm. the mandates of mm. God for now. Mm. And this is the joy of God, to welcome his children who are sons mm. into his rest. Yes, yes. So this is what Jesus Christ is laboring mm. and preparing for us. Mm. Wow. I go to my father. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Mm. Hey, if not so, I would have told you. Mm. But now I go to prepare a place. For where I am, there mm. you may be oh, also. So, so mm. that is the reason why mm. he came. Mm. So that we can arrive at where he, he is. is. Wow. So that he will become both the author of our eternal salvation, salvation. the captain of our salvation, salvation in raising many sons to glory. Wonderful. Praise God. Um, wow. That was, um, again, I'm just, I'm just being blessed um, abundantly here. And, and I'm, a I'm sure our audience is as well. And um, there's so much things that we've touched on um, and so much depth that we've gone into. And it sprung from just one question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, thank you for sending in that question. Um, you know, this is the last episode for this month. Um, of answering your questions. Um, the next month, um, April, we are going to go back to our usual broadcast. Um, but when we do, you know, when we have guests on the show, please, please, please don't forget to send in your questions and remember to include your name. Um, I've had a brilliant time today. Thank you, Pastor Clay and Pastor Clay and Pastor Lyde. Um, and I hope you have as well. And I will see you on the next episode. Don't miss out. Thank you so much, Pastor Lydie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Clay. Thank you.